welcome to Dishing Up Nutrition, brought to you by Nutritional Weight and Wellness. The topic of our show today is all about natural ways to get rid of menopause symptoms. Does anybody out there need some relief? Well, you might be familiar with some of those symptoms, particularly hot flashes. I hear a lot of hot flashing complaints in my clients. Oh, do so do I, <laughs> Mel. Yeah, lots. Well, I can remember I had 20 hot flashes a day for about 10 years after I had a total hysterectomy and breast cancer. Was- I was so surprised to hear that 20. How did you survive, Mel? <laughs> I lived oh in gosh. tank tops. I, I did. But um, I did... You know, I wish I would have known what I know now, and I'll bet if any of you out there are struggling with hot flashes, you can relate like I did. You'll want to learn how to get some relief. Well, it was not a magic pill. It was simply my food choices, and we're going to dig deeper today into those food choices uh, this morning, so grab a pen. You might want to write some down. I just recently learned that there are over 6,000 women in the U.S. who go into menopause each and every day, which means about 27 million women are menopausal. That's a lot of us. (laughs) That's a lot of us. (laughs) And I don't know about you, Mel, but I remember the men in my life (laughs) during that time, they're like, what is going on with you? (laughs) You I remember being in a small group. Um, a couples group and three of us had hair binders on our wrist at all times. <laughs> and so you would just see someone would grab their hair, or throw it up in a ponytail mm-hmm. and you just, and we all knew the you, three of us knew we would look at each other and you, you know, everything yeah. had to be in layers so that you could peel them off at any given yes, moment. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, sadly, I might add that the majority of women who really, they know so little about the whole process of menopause, especially how food and nutrition can help relieve or hopefully even eliminate those mm-hmm. symptoms. But at Nutritional Weight and Wellness, um, we are on a mission <laughs> to educate you women out there starting today. So good morning, everyone. I'm Carolyn Hudson, and I'm a registered and licensed dietitian, and I've been that for well over 30 years. So I see a lot of women who are going through menopause because they not only uh, trust my expertise, but they also know at my age I totally get it. Yeah. Right. I totally get it. It's good to have a practitioner that you work with who understands. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so. And I'm Melanie Beasley. I'm also a registered and licensed dietitian with about 30 years of experience working with a variety of people with a wide range of health problems. And as I mentioned, I had non stop hot flashes for over 10 years. And at that point in my life, I had no idea. That the bagel and the coffee I had at breakfast set me up to hot flash all day long. In fact, I would get up every morning, have my breakfast, make my coffee, put an ice pack in my robe pocket (laughs) to go upstairs and read because I knew I within 20 minutes I was slapping that ice pack on my neck. So sometimes it takes some small changes to get great results, more than ice packs. I also had breast cancer due to an excess level of estrogen. Once again, I really had no idea that the soy lattes I often drank were a problem because at the time I was unaware that soy caused my body to produce more estrogen and being allergic to dairy, I was doing a lot more soy milk. Um, Up until my oncologist said, knock it off. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So I've learned so much since then which is why I want to be a part of teaching hundreds and hundreds of women uh, simple nutrition habits to rebalance their body, to prevent those pesky menopause symptoms, or even to reduce and eliminate the symptoms altogether. So in fact, coming up soon, Nutritional Weight and Wellness will be rolling out a six-hour menopause seminar covering all things menopause. This is where we talk about all things menopause, including relief from menopause symptoms, how to feel great, how to look great during these more mature years. And I was honored to be one of the presenters along with nutritionist Cara Carper. You've heard her on the show. And it was a six hour seminar and we had so much fun filming it. I was worried because we didn't have 
the um, live, the live. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that energy of the women is wonderful. But we had such a great time. So. Good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I can't wait to review or see that one. <laughs> um, I do remember sitting through and going to the live in person ones. And those are just they're dynamic. Yeah. The, the feedback and all the women, you know, getting together and talking about what they're going through or what they did go through or what they think they're going to go through. Yes. Yeah, um, and so taking yeah. notes. I, I mean, I was taking oh. notes, even though I'd heard it a couple of times. I still learn something new every time. Yeah. Every time you listen or go to one of those mm-hmm. seminars, I, I'd say that really for almost all of our education programs, mm-hmm. you learn something new you do. and and you and I we're doing the radio show. I feel like we learn something new every time we do the show. You dig into the research and it's um for you know being nutrition nerds like we are, yeah, <laughs> it's fun, it's fun for us, and then getting to convey it to everyone out there, is, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a privilege, great. yeah, I love it. so the sessions I've seen of the menopause seminars, as I said, are excellent. Uh, they're really easy to watch. Uh, they're very professional. They're highly researched. They're very practical and filled with very doable things, nutrition and lifestyle changes that you can do. Plus, it's laced with humor. <laughs> there has to be. Yeah. It, I mean, menopause, we need to be able to laugh, right? right. Because that's, you know, we need to control some of it, uh, but we need to be able to laugh about it. So, but when you hear Melanie talk about flashing those 20 times a day for 10 years and she's still smiling, <laughs> you just want to smile along with her, right? It's a whole different phrase when you say hot mama. Yeah. You know, you're just a hot, hot mother. mother. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I hear Cara talk about her perimenopause symptoms, uh, uh, she had anxiety and sleep problems and then her personal nutritional solutions. She now uses to overcome her anxiety and those sleep issues. You will understand the impact of nutrition on your sleep and anxiety. For Cara, the solution all started with simply eating a real food snack before bed. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. It was a simple solution. There's more. She did a lot more. Oh, yes. Yes. But um, that was her starting place and it made an impact. And Mm -hmm. so I think about that with my clients who are struggling. Exactly. Yeah. So now you know what we have in store for you. So uh, we obviously want you to get some answers to reduce some of your menopause symptoms. So most women officially reach menopause between somewhere 45 to 55. And I've actually had some even a lot younger than that. Mm -hmm. Um, And I don't. I don't know if that's common or not, or if it's getting more common that it's even younger than that. I think it is. Um, But it does seem like I'm getting more even uh, a little bit younger than that. Um, And unfortunately, the symptoms can last anywhere from like two years to what Melanie said, 10 years. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I talked to my mom and I asked her. When, of course, when I went through menopause, when I started going through even the perimenopause, I remember going to her and she said, oh, I don't even remember. I don't remember anything about menopause. I went, oh, oh no. Why am I suffering so much? Right. So many of the women we're seeing today have menopause symptoms starting, as I said, even earlier than that. So 35 and lasting oh into their 60s yes. or 70s it, it's um it's something that needs to be addressed because it's so life disruptive it is yeah and you want to feel like you're sane and capable with what's going on in your life and it can be really disruptive mm-hmm. what's even more interesting is that over 30 million women in menopause are employed and many of these women are leaving their jobs because of these symptoms however They don't necessarily want to tell their employers why they're leaving um, because this can be very personal and a private situation. So we were going to kind of open that up today. Mm -hmm. It's already time for our first break. So you are listening to Dishing Up Nutrition brought to you by Nutritional Weight and Wellness. I invite you to try our bone building plan. I'm going to outline the plan for you and you can decide for yourself if you want more information 
and our help to build strong bones. First, we want you to eat quality fat. Then, we want you to eliminate the sugar from your diet. Exercise to stimulate bone growth and take quality calcium supplements. When we come back from break, Mel will talk about an excellent bone building supplement. And if you think this bone building plan sounds like a good solution for you, I invite you to call 651-699-3438 and tell us what your needs are. And we will help find the right dietitian or nutritionist for you. And we'll be right back. Welcome back to Dishing Up Nutrition. As most of you know, bones do not regenerate in a short time. In fact, it takes 10 years to build a skeleton. So it is a slow but positive process that includes real food, key bone building supplements, and exercise. By the way, walking is a great bone building exercise. I also believe that having adequate collagen is important. You can get collagen from adding one scoop of the key collagen to your protein shake daily. I love it because it has a collagen peptide called Fortibone for our bones. And then you can um, add it to your own bone broth and sip on a warm bone broth. Also, you can add it um, to smoothies. That's what I do. Um, and it's specially designed bone building supplement called Kiosio Plus. That's another thing I like to add. Kiosio Plus includes the correct amount of over 20 nutrients for bones, calcium, magnesium, zinc, B vitamins, vitamin D. So it's your multi as well. And all which are important nutrients that help our bones that, and we need those for repair and regrowth. So there's a great deal right now. You can save 15% on Kiosio Plus through the rest of September. You can order online at weightandwellness.com or stop into one of our six Twin Cities metro locations and you can do curbside. So, you know, in today's economy with the shortage of employees, the fact that women are leaving the workforce, what you were talking about before break, Mel, because of embarrassing menopause symptoms mm-hmm. puts even more of a stress and strain on all of our businesses. I know that, you know, it's difficult. I know we're even having trouble finding like our front desk staff people. Yes. It's like it's tight out there. <laughs> it is. We're at a people shortage. So and Carolyn, I think simple simple solution is to educate, educate the women experiencing these, experiencing these symptoms so they can find relief and educate their employers so they can help redirect and their female employees to healthy menopause solutions. Well, unfortunately, medicating a hormonal problem is not always very successful. And finding a hormonal solution takes a well-thought-out nutrition, lifestyle, education, and support plan. And I want our listeners to find solutions that help relieve the symptoms, not just mask the symptoms. Right, right. And that's what I find a lot. If you go to your doctor, <laughs> you know, you're at your wit's end, right? <laughs> because you're not sleeping, you have the hot flashes, all this stuff. The flare gun, help what? me. Yeah. What do they do? Well, they, it's usually a medication. Right. They try to give you, what do we call that? The magic pill? Mm-hmm. And it does help relieve some of the symptoms, but it doesn't solve the problem, right? right? It so masks, if you come off those medications, it's you go still there. Right back, right? So Mel and I really want to start with talking about those hot flashes. You know, when I'm working with a client, I ask them first, what did you eat for breakfast? You know, maybe <laughs> they say they had that bagel and a cup of coffee like you or had. Or cereal right? and toast. Mm, not cereal and toast. Um, and fruit, probably, right? All carbs. That's what we grew up with. That's what we grew up with, right? So most people don't realize that that bagel can turn into 14 and a quarter teaspoons of glucose or sugar, right? Sugar in your body that, that comes from that amount of carbs. So... Um, there are that's equivalent to like four slices of bread. So eating one bagel basically is like eating four pieces of toast or yeah. bread in mm-hmm. the morning. That said, if you eat a bagel for breakfast, guess what's going to happen? 
Well, it's very likely you're going to have hot flashes. Hot flashes all, all morning. morning, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, as I mentioned earlier in the show, I was one of those who ate um, low-fat bagels for breakfast. I taught low-fat bagels in class because mm-hmm. that's what we knew. Um, so many of you, those those starches, the, the bagel and the cereal um, may not be the best choice for you. But instead... Um, that might be something you're not doing. You say, well, I, I just don't eat those carbs. So I want to touch on the wine habit. Oh, the wine habit. <laughs> the yeah, vitamin that. W. <laughs> <laughs> um, you say to yourself, the kids are out of the house. I'm tired. I skip lunch. It was a hard day. So you have a glass of wine. Maybe that's your whole dinner. And then you end up feeling anxious, not sleeping well. So unfortunately, because of that glass of wine, you also can have night sweats. It disrupts your sleep. You might wake up feeling more anxious than you did the night before. There are other times, you know, you might have difficulty focusing, concentrating, thinking clearly. And that's the residual effect of that wine. We have a saying at Nutritional Weight and Wellness, no sleepy, no thinky. Um, personally, I think I'm just a mean sister if I don't get enough sleep. <laughs> So if I saw you as a client, I would help you learn that skipping lunch to save some calories would actually slow your metabolism. So instead of losing weight, you can end up gaining weight. And a simple lunch of a bowl of chili, chicken with some avocados and salsa, help to balance your blood sugar, fire up your metabolism. You know, one of my favorite recipes for clients that are just too busy for breakfast or lunch is to make a protein smoothie. Put it in an insulated water bottle or coffee tumbler because it looks like you're just having your water, you know, during a meeting, Mm -hmm. if you're Zooming or in meetings. Um, It's all things fall right now. So check out the pumpkin smoothie on our website because it is delicious. And that can kind of offset that need for wine later. If we start getting your blood sugar balanced, the anxiety and the brain fog are improving. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm well past menopause. (laughs) <laughs> Thank goodness. However, if I decide to have that glass of red wine, usually with my evening meal or when I have that with my evening meal, I still will get like those night sweats. Maybe not as bad as yeah. when I was right in the throes of menopause, but no, I, yeah, it, it stays on, unfortunately. I've so got 20-year-olds really... who are having those night sweats Yeah, from wine. Yeah. Yeah. And to me, that says a lot about estrogen. They've got just too much estrogen circulating in their body. Right. So let me explain a little bit about balancing that blood sugar. So when you eat a balanced lunch, like the ones that, you know, Mel was just mentioned, um, you will not have that out of control hunger when you get home. And additionally, you know, I'm, I would try to help my clients find a healthy substitute for that glass of wine. Um, my current favorite is the LaCroix Limoncello. I really like that one. Or you could do like an herbal iced tea or sparkling water over ice with a slice of lemon or lime. And sometimes I have them make that protein shake that mm-hmm. you were just talking about. And put it in your wine glass. Put it in your wine glass. You know, I I definitely really encourage a lot of people, if they even, you know, and now people are starting to go out, if they are going out with friends, instead of having that glass of wine, order, you know, with soda water or something, but put it in the wine glass. Mm-hmm. So at least you feel like you're participating in that, you know, wine and socialization. Um, but the protein shake, you know, if you did a protein shake, whatever you're going to do when you walk in the door, sit down and relax. Rest for, and digest. Yes, rest and digest. I like that, Mel. Um, and before you start tackling dinner, you know, it's all about having a meal that balances your blood sugar, right? It's really important to balance our blood sugar. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and here's a comment I hear over oh. and over that I want to get to after our break. Yeah. So that's already time for a second break. You are listening to Dishing Up Nutrition. The reality is that most people have gained weight over this past year and a half because of the lockdown. 
and the stress of COVID-19 or being home and really close to your refrigerator. (laughs) Whatever your reason is, you know you don't like those extra pounds. So if you've gained unwanted pounds, we have some ways to help you. And we'll discuss those when we come back from break. Welcome back to Fishing Up Nutrition. So when we went to break, I was talking about those of you who may have gained some weight during COVID because your refrigerator was just a little too close, maybe. And so if you've gained those unwanted pounds, we have a couple different ways to help you lose weight. Um, either meeting in a class setting or meeting one-on-one with a dietitian or nutritionist. You could take our Nutrition for Weight Loss series. We have some in-person locations and uh, we can do them uh, virtually as well. So those in-person locations are North Oaks and, oh, is that right? North Oaks? Oh, no, 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 that's not right. Um, Maple Grove and Egan and Egan and Woodbury, I think, are all a go. So, um, that would be great. So, those are the in person, and then of course, we've got the virtual nutrition for weight loss class series that's going to start next week, the week of September 22nd. Either of them will help you get back to eating real food and feeling good and losing weight. So, I encourage you to sign up today. All you have to do is call our office at 651-699-3438, or you can actually go to our website at weightandwellness, all spelled out, dot com, and uh, sign up for yourself. Yeah, and they're taking very, very careful precautions in these in-person classes to protect both our clients and staff. So I want to share a little bit about two of our fabulous nutrition specialists. Brandy Burrow is a registered dietitian, and she became interested in nutrition because of her own weight issues. So she gets the whole weight loss thing. And Jolene Carlson, a mother of four, is a licensed nutritionist who has lost over 100 pounds and has maintained that weight loss by eating real food. She is so well aware of the fact that you cannot skip meals to lose weight. So if you need motivation, accountability, uh, These are fabulous women, and I suggest some weekly appointments with either of these knowledgeable ladies. And you can check out our website, weightandwellness.com, and decide who you want to work with, who best fits your needs and your schedule. You can call 651-699-3438 to get started um, and start feeling good again. Yeah, you know, I tell uh, a lot of people... I like to remind them that all of our profiles are on our website. So you can read a little bit about uh, each nutritionist and pick, you know, whichever one you feel like you can make a connection with. I often hear that from from clients. Oh, yeah, I read that in your profile or like they hear us on the radio. Yes. (laughs) And they say, oh, I just wanted to come and see you. Mm -hmm. You know, that's great. I love it. So I was talking a little bit about other things our clients have said or what I hear over and over in nutrition therapy sessions. And I hear women say, I can live with the hot flashes. I can live with the night sweats. I can live with the wrinkles, but I cannot live with this belly fat. Oh, yeah. Belly fat. (laughs) Yeah. As a dietitian, there are many times when I look at the health of a woman in menopause and I often think she should be more concerned about heart disease or osteoporosis or cancer or diabetes um, than her weight. So I, I want the whole package to be healthy. Mm-hmm. And, but here's the thing. It is the pounds around the middle that is the most concerning to so many women because that's where they feel unattractive. And that's a really bad feeling. And the fact is about 75% of women gained weight during menopause. Mm-hmm. So we want to work on the total woman and the belly fat, fat will, you know, come off. Yeah, exactly. So, okay, listeners, you know, I bet you're thinking, okay, Carolyn is a dietitian, and so surely she didn't have any problem with this. (laughs) Wrong. (laughs) I did. (laughs) I was concerned about that belly fat, Mm -hmm. you know, after like, I think it was like 60, I kind of went, oh my gosh, what is this? What is this? (laughs) I've got, I've got to lose that weight. So let's look at some of the causes of that weight gain during menopause. We call it the science of menopausal metabolism. 
So we have two major hormones, right? Estrogen and progesterone. Most menopausal women have excess estrogen and a deficiency of the progesterone. I think most people, uh, most women at least understand that estrogen gives women, you know, your curves and smooth and youthful skin. However, too much estrogen, estrogen, sorry, causes too many curves and it could be a leading cause and definitely is a leading cause of breast cancer. So it's important that we that we feel comfortable in the bodies we're in, but even more importantly, that we take care of our health internally. So Absolutely. That's, you know, that's the key. And mm-hmm. so in my case, too much estrogen gave me great skin, but it was also the leading cause of my breast cancer. And as it is for a lot of women. And once you get that call from your doctor, you no longer care about the condition of your skin. You know, it's it's devastating. So no one wants that. We want to take care of the, our women out there. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So, you know, farmers have been using synthetic estrogen and some other uh, hormones to fatten up or, you know, increase the growth rate of their cattle for years. And those same fattening responses happen to women when they have too much estrogen. So here's a little more science. Your body actually makes excess estrogen when you eat too many processed carbs. And you know, Mel, I didn't really know that, even though I've been a dietitian for over 30 years. We're always learning. I didn't know that. Yeah. You know, so it really wasn't until I came to Nutritional Weight and Wellness that I started really putting all of those pieces together. And as I said, I I was concerned about that little belly fat, but thankfully I lost it (laughs) once I learned all of these things that we're trying to teach our clients today Mm -hmm. and all of you listeners out there. So maybe you eat a bagel with some jelly or jam in the morning and you're thinking, oh, well, that's good. It's low fat. But since it's a processed carb, what's going to happen? That's going to increase your blood sugar. And then that requires insulin, which is your master hormone, right? It controls pretty much everything. Um, But that insulin is going to be released from your pancreas. And that downside of that insulin is that insulin actually stores body fat, right? It's that fat accumulating hormone. So we don't really want that insulin secreting as much as it does if we're having a bunch of processed carbs. And that excess body fat, basically that tells your body to make more estrogen. So in other words... The more fat you have, the more estrogen you have, right? And that's like this vicious circle. We want to try to keep that insulin down, keep it in its cage. (laughs) Yeah. So, um, you know, maybe you're somebody that has a oatmeal or you have a glass of wine or a latte during the, during the day. Well, that once worked for breakfast for you when you were younger, but now it's too high in sugar, uh, creates that insulin response in your body and insulin produces like Carolyn said, more estrogen, which creates more fat cells, which in, then in turn makes more estrogen that creates more fat cells. And the process goes on and on, on and on and on. And you feel suddenly like I have no control over this beast. Yeah, <laughs> right. Exactly. So what happens? Your waist size starts increasing and you can no longer snap those tight fitting jeans. <laughs> any longer Mm -hmm. given if if they're don't have that spandex in them right i mean i i'm talking a lot of people that are still doing sweats or you know things like that and haven't really gotten into their jeans so i've asked them find that pair of jeans that you can no longer get into find a skirt or something um and that will kind of give you a maybe incentive (laughs) to start working on that so if you're in menopause, if it's your time, if that's your time in life, you need to cut back on the carbs you're eating. You need to reduce those high sugar and processed carbs so you can balance your b- blood sugar, which means less insulin, right? And 
when that less insulin is required, that means less body fat is created. The take home message here is for better metabolism, eat less bread during menopause. No more of those sub sandwiches. Leave the crackers at the store. Don't even bring them into your house. Stay away from your favorite bakery. And do not go down the cereal aisle at the grocery store. Do not even tempt yourself. Instead, order some vegetables and not that pasta. Oh, and never, never drink that can or, you know, bottle of pop. Uh, that, that has over 10 teaspoons of sugar. We want to learn to love real food. So that means like real meat, real protein, no soy protein, real carbs and vegetables, 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 right? Organic if possible. Real natural fats, butter, olive oil, avocado oil, uh, avocado mayo, coconut oil, nuts, olives, None of that manufactured, refined fats, no soybean or corn or unrefined canola oil. And it's time for our third break. You are listening to Dishing Up Nutrition. Let's talk about how to make strong bones. It's important to eat healthy fat, but you also need adequate amounts of protein to make collagen in your bones. The collagen allows bones to be somewhat flexible so if you fall the bone is not going to break without sufficient collagen the calcium and other minerals cannot combine to form bone think of it this way collagen is what helps calcium attach to the bone collagen is very important for strong bones and we will be right back welcome back to dishing up nutrition Because of some of my cancer treatments, I have needed to be really protective to maintain strong and flexible bones. And two bone building products I never missed taking are the Key Osteo Plus and the Key Collagen. Plus, I make my own bone broth and I drink at least a cup a day. I stir my collagen in it um, if I don't put it in my smoothie. So the bone broth recipe I use is delicious. It's on our website, weightandwellness.com. And you can just click on recipes to find it. And remember, Kiosio Plus is on special this month, 15% off. Yeah, that's a good deal. It's a screaming deal. So for best weight loss, I encourage women to buy meat that is labeled raised without hormones. And these commercial farmers of beef and sheep use hormones to promote rapid weight gain in their animals. And I try to buy organic grass-fed meat with no added hormones. I like free-range chicken and turkey. And actually, researchers have found that grass-fed meat contains CLA, which is conjugated linoleic acid, which has been found to promote weight loss. Oh, we like that, right? Win. <laughs> so there are so many menopause symptoms to talk about, but huh, we have limited time here when we're on the radio. So we want to peek inside of you, actually, and look at your bones, We've already kind of talked a little bit about bones, right? So how strong are your bones? Have you had a bone density test? If so, what did it show? Did it show that maybe you are already in osteopenia or worse, osteoporosis? So when we're aging, we ha- we really want to age gracefully. We don't want to have any of those fractures You want to maintain strong and healthy bones. So if you could listen to your bones talking to you, they would tell you to feed me, right? (laughs) Feed, feed me well. They would tell you, I need real protein. I need real fat. I need real vegetable carbohydrates. They would tell you, seal up that sugar. Get rid of it. Swear off that soda and the bowls of cereal. And, of course, that alcohol. Only eat natural fats and eat frequently throughout the day to keep nutrients flowing into your bones. I've noticed that as women get older, they lose their taste for protein. Wow, that I, I don't know why that happens. <laughs> I wish it didn't. However, the reality is, for good bone health, you need protein. Bone is protein. Yeah, Mm -hmm. you have to have protein. 
And, you know, you have to have that protein to build the collagen material for that bone support. Absolutely. So protein is critical. You know, in fact, one study found that when women do not uh, do not eat properly for their bones, they are there's more bone loss in the spine and the upper leg. So I, I tell my clients this is important because we lose more women to an osteoporotic fracture every year than we do breast cancer and ovarian cancer combined. So also about 15 to 20 million people suffer from osteoporosis. And one in three women will have problems with their health of their bones. That being said, eating enough protein is critical. And I'm talking about anything with a face. So not necessarily plant proteins. So at Nutritional Weight and Wellness, we will first suggest eating at least 12 ounces of cooked protein daily. Three ounces for breakfast, four ounces for lunch, one to two ounces in an afternoon snack. I know some of you are just amazed. But that four ounces of dinner is critical, but it's just not enough. Secondly, I think low-fat diet has a leading cause of so many women to experience osteoporosis. Um, And eating a low-fat diet is not a bone-building diet. I find that sometimes women are so afraid of eating fat that they just cannot even imagine sautéing their vegetables in butter or olive oil. So instead, they steam them using no fat at all. What about you? Are you sautéing or are you still steaming, right? Yeah. Many of us grew up in the era of low fat, low fat. And that made us demonize fat as a risky food for our health. But let me say it again. We need that fat for bones, our cells, our brains, and it makes things taste delicious. Oh, it, yes. <laughs> I, once I stop steaming my vegetables and sauteing them, um, you know, e- even if I do steam some vegetables, I'm putting butter on it. Everything's yeah. better with butter. Everything is better with butter. So these fats that, that build bones, those are the natural fats. Okay, so it's butter, cream, peanut butter, or any of the nut butters, cream cheese, olive oil, avocado mayonnaise, nuts, and olives. Those are the natural fats. However, the processed fats like soybean oil or corn oil, cottonseed oil, vegetable oil, canola oil, they all interfere with building strong, healthy bones. So these are the fats that you're going to find in the clear containers, right, in, at the store. And I'm sure many of you Good out point. there just said to yourself, oh, that's all I have in my cupboard right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Go in your pantry. Go in Do your you pantry. see clear containers right. of oil? So well, all of these fats, natural fats, are sensitive to light. They need to be in dark bottles. So that's an easy determinant Factor, You know, obviously I want you to read the labels, but move away from those clear (laughs) uh, containers of soybean oil or canola oil or whatever it happens to be and go to the ones that have the dark containers that then the light won't get into that and, you know, won't destroy that fat. So I love that with the clear containers. I love also telling my clients that if they're going to have butter, um, make sure it's grass-fed. Oh, the grass-fed butter is so good. It's delicious, and it also won't have hormones. So we we all know about um, a grandmother or an aunt or a sister or a neighbor who suddenly fell and broke her hip and ended up in a nursing home or never came home again. It's really tragic. Well, did you know the bone usually breaks before the fall because they become weak and fragile? So don't let that happen to you. We, we encourage you to come in, meet with a dietitian or a nutritionist so we can set up a bone building eating plan for you that has the right amount of calcium and key bone building nutrients. Just because you're older does not mean you cannot have strong, healthy bones. I, it, it takes time to learn and to follow that hormone balancing eating plan. It takes time for nutrients to regenerate the bones. It doesn't happen in one session. But building strong bones can be done. And we have many success stories from clients over the years. In fact, just this week, I heard from a client. Um, she wanted, she refused bone medication. She came to us because she wanted a more natural approach. Um, and so she 
worked with me for two years. Um, she was very diligent. Uh, I was the boss of her and she did what I told her. <laughs> so um, kudos to her because she did the hard work, but she gained 8% bone in two years. Wow. So it was thrilling. And so it was just, we worked on a program together and yeah. her bones responded nicely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So sometimes they maintain the bone that they have. Sometimes they build and put more bone on. And I always love to say, what did your doctor say? Yeah. She said nothing. He just said, yep, yep, we've gained eight and put this, you've gained 8% and then put it aside. Yeah. It's amazing. The uh, clients that I have, um, of course, you know, when you're in a menopause or once you hit menopause, that's when it becomes critical with your bones, right? Yes. You know, then that's where we really start losing. I believe that we should be taking a, like a, a baseline. I do. Um, you know, um, DEXA scan Good. like early before Good. menopause. You have to push for it because now they want you to do a DEXA scan later. Like after 65. After 65. So, it, but here's a little tip. If you have risk factors, you know someone in your family who has osteopenia or osteoporosis, that's something that will get you in a little earlier for your insurance to cover typically. So if you press for that, if you're on certain medications that strip, Mm -hmm. um, that strip bone and don't allow you to remodel bone and your bones can become more frail, um, then that puts, you at risk and you can get in for that DEXA scan a little earlier than that 65 because the 65 at 65 you may be in severe osteoporosis right and like I I think I had a a client just recently actually that said she had never had a DEXA scan Mm -hmm. and she was over 60 already and I I was just like oh my gosh you've got to get in because we don't even you could already be in osteoporosis or osteopenia Mm -hmm. but we still get them at 50 Yes. Yeah. So I, I don't know what it's about, but you ha- it, it's just one more area you really have to be proactive for your own health to take care of yourself. So it can be reversed. Mm-hmm. The other thing I, I think that uh, we would be remiss without at least mentioning is that most doctors, when you are in the osteopenia category, what do they they want to they want to put you on or uh, one of the drugs. Right. Well, and, and every woman has to evaluate her own choice of her comfortability but we have other solutions too right thank you for listening today we hope that each and every person will experience better health through eating real food it's simple and life-changing thank you for joining us today thanks for listening to dishing up nutrition if you enjoy this podcast please share your favorite episodes with a friend or leave a review on itunes stitcher or iHeartRadio. The content and opinions expressed are those of the hosts or presenters. They are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent disease. Product statements have not been evaluated by the FDA.